In this video I will show you how to set up Agisoft with the GeoEat model. So the result of the point cloud or the DEM is in the correct height uh, on the GeoEat and uh, not with ellipsoidical heights. So first uh, I will show you the problem. So I load some photos. Uh, then set up the coordinate system. I uh, want to use uh, it in ETRS uh, 89 in the UTM zone 33 north. And our camera positions are not in this system, it's in VGS, uh, WGS uh, 84. And our markers are in the ETIs the system. Uh, accuracy uh, is 0 0.1 meters because it's flown by uh, DJI Phantom 4 RTK and the marker accuracy is by 2 centimeters because it's me measured with the SARPOS uh, satellite receiver. Okay, you will see uh, the altitude is uh, 125 uh, meters. It's a uh, ellipsoidal height. And when we uh, load the reference points, we have uh, um, heights on the gear read and uh, it's uh, normal heights and uh, the copter is flown only in 60 meters height not in 100 meters uh, you see here the difference um, and the problem is uh, that we have um, undulation between ellipsoidal heights and gear read heights by nearby 40 meters here in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. So when we will convert the cameras to the same coordinate system, then we see the altitude is the same as before. It's also ellipsoidal heights. And that's um, the reason why uh, the um, our pictures don't be in a good accuracy after um, doing the align of the photos. After aligning the photos, we see the sparse cloud, but when we turn the perspective, we see that the ground control points are not on the surface. So there's a shift in the height and we have not a correct position. And when we look at the photos, uh, we see the calculated position of our ground control point and the real position is here. That's a pink frisbee and we may have a difference from about 10 meters and when we position the point in the photo we get the difference in the ground control point here That's not what we really accept, what I expect when we use a RTK drone. Normally we should have a 
result by only a difference of uh, uh, some centimeters. And here we have a difference by uh, 5 meters and in the height uh, 10 meters uh, only in this uh, point. And when we don't use it as a reference point, only as a control point, then we see the uh, difference uh, grow up. And the estimated errors in the pictures are really small. So we see that the um, position of the pictures are calculated uh, correctly. But there's a difference uh, through the ground control point. And the reason is uh, only the missing um, GeoEat model. So how it is possible to change the coordinate system to a system with GeoEat model? For it, uh, we have to uh, close Metashape and then start again with administrator privilex. It's not possible by right mouse click. It's no, no administrator privilex here. Uh, so we have to start the Explorer, go to the program files folder, go to Agisoft, Metashape Pro, and here we find the executable program. And with right mod, mouse click, we now can start the software with administrator privilege. We have to go to the reference settings, and here we can select a coordinate system, a predefined, or we can go to more. Select much more predefined coordinate systems, or it is possible to edit a predefined coordinate system with own parameters, and that's what we want to do. We see this coordinate system has no vertical coordinate system uh, defined, so we just get ellipsoidal heights. And uh, here it is possible to change to custom or select uh, predefined vertical coordinate systems like the Deutsches Haupthöhennetz from 2016. We select, but uh, it will not work because the GeoEat model is not installed uh, in the GeoEat uh, folder as a TIFF file because um, it's not possible to download the GeoEat model from the homepage from Agisoft. And in Germany, we have to pay for GeoEat models from BK. G. Um, so um, it's only possible in Germany to go to custom and um, <clears throat> here we say his name will be German combined Jewit from 2016 and for the region of Mecklenburg Vorpommern. And uh, here at the datum we have to add and now it's possible to select a GeoEat file we bought from BKG. And uh, there are several file formats possible in Agitsoft. When you buy the data from BKG, you will uh, get the German combined GeoEat in several file formats like from Trimble, Topcon, Javad, or Leica. And also, there are some uh, file formats for um, Office software like um, 
Kivit or for the surf CE. And uh, surf CE has a file format that really works well. It's the Carlson GIRID separation file, and um, I will import it. And um, when I select it, I just have to uh, define the vertical data. And uh, here it's not possible to type in such a, uh, a word or something else. Uh, you really have to select uh, a vertical datum. And um, in Germany, it's the correct is Deutsches Haupthöhennetz 2016. And then the EPSG code uh, 1170 is also so defined. And then we can say install for all users because we have started Agisoft Metashape with administrator privilege. And then say OK. And uh, when we did, we get a new user defined coordinate system. Here in this part, and we see the properties, and at the end, we see the definition of the vertical coordinate system here. And also, the vertical datum uh, is defined as well. Okay, then the coordinate system is pre selected for the project, for the cameras, and for the markers. Um, but we um, change the cameras to WGS84 because uh, that's uh, the coordinate system uh, DJI uses in the axis headers of, of the photos, and the markers are in the project files. Accuracy is much more higher. Uh, we see Phantom 4 RTK and the markers. Uh, at accuracy by two centimeters. Okay, and now we can import the photos like at the beginning of the video. And we see altitude is uh, by 125 meters. That's the ellipsoidal height. And uh, now when we change the coordinate system, we convert it to our project coordinate system, only the cameras. Then the altitude is by 88 meters. So the undulation between ellipsoidal heights and geoid heights um, are used and uh, the height is uh, corrected, so we uh, get now uh, geoid heights. And uh, now we can import the reference points with the geoid heights also. And now we will align the photos so we will get the sparse cloud and then the reference point will be in the same uh, plane like the uh, surface of our sparse cloud. Meanwhile, we see the result in the Agisoft Metashape Geoids folder. Here we see the new TIFF file was converted by Agisoft from the GSF Carlson file. And when we look through the properties, that's the EXIF header, we see a part where the vertical datum is defined. And that's important for Agisoft to work with the GEOID model, um, that this vertical datum is really defined. And um, we also have a 
EPSG code defined here. Now the photos are aligned and we see that our ground control points are in the same height as our surface from the sparse cloud. And uh, when we look through the pictures, then are the calculated positions of our ground control points at the same position as the uh, pink frisbees in the pictures. So um, we can place it exactly, maybe in two uh, pictures, so that we can calculate the difference. And now when we change to the arrows, we see here the difference. Um, from the checkpoint, or the, uh, uh, now it's a ground control point when, when the uh, point is checked and when we uncheck all the points, then we just have checkpoints and we see the difference from the checkpoints to the calculated position from the photos and uh, yeah, it's a really a good result, we just have um, 15 millimeters in height and 5 millimeters uh, in the north. Um, it's um, absolutely a good result and that's what we respected from an RTK drone and not uh, 10 millimeters difference like in the first try. It's not better uh, than a normal um, drone with just uh, uncorrected GPS.